so welcome we're going to look in today's video at savage magnus carlson at the age of 12 this truly is one of his best games uh, even though he is only 12 uh, he was playing against hans crow harestad in the politkin cup in copenhagen and this really is truly incredible um so what's also incredible is the first 13 moves of this game are all book moves so we're getting a look at grandmaster preparation but even as a 12 year old you see magnus was on it so he starts off with e4 e5 knight f3 knight c6 bishop b5 a6 we've clearly got the roy lopez opening and a6 the murphy defense bishop a4 knight f6 castles bishop b5 bishop b3 bishop e7 rook to e1 d6 c3 castles h3 knight a5 bishop c2 c5 d4 queen c7 knight b to d2 knight c6 d5 and knight to d8 so we find ourselves 13 moves in both players completely in book we got the chigorian defense of the murphy defense variation of the Roy lopez um, so pretty amazing stuff um, as we can see it's a very even game white is preferred slightly ahead and so magnus responds with a a4 um, obviously with the id that um, see let's just say uh, hans does any other move just the way they move if magnus takes here obviously hans cannot take the pawn he'll have to push because if he takes magnus wins the free rook so that's not going to happen at this level so we get a4 then we get a slight inaccuracy for here from hans uh, the computer thinks that it should go to b8 but instead he goes to a7 and then magnus goes knight to f1 bringing the the knight over to attack onto the king side this is the plan um, getting all of his attacking troops towards the castle king and we get g6 Bishop h6, h6 by a man, it's very simply knowing what he wants, wants to kick out the rook, gaining a tempo. Hans is, has to go to e, rook to e8, and then we get knight to d3. Magnus bringing his knight now into the attack. Then Hans plays knight to d7. Then we get knight to h2. Obviously, um, Magnus may be thinking of bringing his knight this way, but also getting the pawn, maybe trying to open up uh, this file. Then we get f6, uh, making sure that there's nothing hanging down the line. Everything's protected. See, this pawn is protected twice. So everything is pretty solid on the king side. Then we get bishop to e3 by Magnus. We get knight to b6. Obviously, thinking about coming in, infiltrating in here, also looking at the pawn, depending on where a white bishop ends up. Magnus responds with a takes b5. Then we get a takes b5 from hands and here we see magnus goes bishop to d3 now it says it's a mistake because the whole idea is if you don't make the bishop you take take and then we can maybe move the bishop if we show wish you can see it's the second choice in the engine uh, but what we see is the queen is being moved out but magnus instead goes straight for here then hands as it says has a missed tactic now the missed tactic 
is this. Same idea. Rook takes, queen takes, and again here. The whole idea is now Magnus's rook is out of the terms of play. It's just going to have to waste the tempo getting back. And of course, Grandmaster Chess is all about gaining tempo. So Hans doesn't either doesn't see it or decides not to play it for some reason. Then again, we have the same issue. The computer's not liking it, but I mean, it's not the biggest deal in the world. Magnus making sure the two rooks are joined together and also giving himself a battering ram if this pawn is ever pushed. Now Hans, sensing the danger, wanting to block off the squares, brings his knight over. Now Magnus plays rook to uh, a7, queen to a7 takes, and now an inaccuracy. Well, you can see what Magnus is trying to do, trying to win this pawn. And then Hans, uh, may somewhat surprisingly pinning himself to the pawn, but obviously protecting it. Then we get knight to g4, um, followed by king to g7, which is an excellent move, giving extra protection on this square. Then we get bishop to c1, which is, of course, protecting any knight jumps. Then we get knight to a4, which is a mistake. Oh, Magnus brings back his bishop here. And we get rook to a8. Queen to e3, which is a mistake. And we'll see that the favor has slightly gone to the black side now. We get c4. Rook to f1. Knight c5. Looking to get an outpost possibly down the line. Then we get knight to h6. Now, knight to h6 is a good move because you're attacking this knight here. You've also got the battery up along here, so if he takes, Magnus will obviously get a check. So let's just check that variation. Hits, checks, here. And Magnus is slightly better. Um, but here we see knight g5. Now this is a mistake. Why is this mistake? Well, we can see what the idea is. You're blocking off the knight. Um, this knight is protected. This knight is now hanging. So what do we do? Well, Magnus goes f4, attacking the knight and the pawn. And of course, if the king takes, you'll be hitting the king with a check. So Hans replies with pawn to e4 takes and Magnus now takes. Now uh, here's a great move, or so it seems, by Hans. Free pawn. Is it a free pawn though? Immediately blunders the whole game away. Now this is uh, an amazing sequence and this is where Savage Magnus comes in. So we've got a knight hanging, we had a free pawn, can't take because if you take you hang your knight with a fork so it's a free pawn uh, all the while while this is attack so what's magnus do well he first of all protects his knight and attacks the bishop at the same time hans is forced to retreat his bishop now here we go let's take a minute here because this is just next level stuff this is why if you ever think you're going to become a grandmaster this is one of the reasons why it ain't going to happen unfortunately as much as we all may wish because this is unbelievable calculation that is showed here what is the best move well you might see it because without looking at the engine because this is an unbelievable move pawn to e5. Now what's the point of pawn to e5? It doesn't really mean anything. Um, but as you notice, with Magnus's move here, with the bishop going back, it went from a plus 4 situation to a plus 9. Why is it plus 9? Well the simplest thing to imagine is, right, let's bring it back here. When Magnus is looking at this, the best way to do is Grandmaster's thinking concepts. So if we're thinking in concepts, where is the attack, attacking pieces? So 
if we took all of black pieces out of the way, these are the squares that are being controlled. And knight controls here, rook controls here, queen controls here. So you're covering basically all of the squares around the king. So what does Magnus E, what does this pawn to e5 move do? Because Hans responds that the best move which is to take um, with the d-pawn. But what's this for a series of results? Can you see the best move? A brilliant move. Unbelievable knight to h5 check. And the game is already over here, because what can Hans do? Well, there's not a whole lot to do. Could he take this this free knight? No, because knight a6, g7, and here we go. Get your piece back. Has to go h5, and we're already in a mating net. What else could um, Hans do here? Well, he took. That's a mistake. Why is that a mistake? Because if you thought the last move was amazing, wait till you see this. Queen to g5. Brilliant move. Giving up the queen. Hans is forced to take with his f-pawn. Now, what did Magnus calculate all the way back here when he pushed his e5-pawn? This is what he calculated. Sacks the knight, sacks the queen, sacks another knight, checks with the rook, check mate. Unbelievable uh, attacking by Magnus Carlsen. And truly showing the power of calculation where he saw back here this pawn push. So we're looking at one move two moves, three moves, four moves, five moves, six moves, checkmate. Uh, a truly wonderful uh, series of attacking chess. And that's it. If you understand how to attack, well, you'll go very far. So an excellent example from Magnus Carlsen there, and certainly one that we can learn from. Um, if all of our pieces are attacking in one direction, how can you clear the way for them to do the very best. Well, I hope you enjoyed the video, and please like and subscribe.